There's gonna be a fight, 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 fight tonight. We're gonna fight, 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 fight for women's rights. It's gonna be a fight, 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 fight tonight. We're gonna fight, 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 fight for women's rights. Hello and welcome. I am T. Erica, the host for the Fight for Women's Rights battle against patriarchy where i will be battling in the ring against master patriarchy on january 22nd this is a facebook live event that you can attend please do visit fightforwomensrights.org to get your ticket which will fund grants for women entrepreneurs so today i'm very excited to talk with nayella like umbrella and she is a grassroots roots organizer and government policy advisor her work is all about lobbying to increase women's representation in government like what this is what all of us should be all about so i'm very excited hey nayella um could you tell us a little bit more about your work hi t erica um, and hope listeners out there um absolutely i'm excited to be here today and talk a little bit about um what it looks like and what it means to build a representative democracy. Um, so I work at the intersections of grassroots movements um, and government uh, because essentially I fundamentally believe that government is rooted in the power of the people. However, because of history, particularly in the American context, government does not represent um, a large, major large majority of the people, particularly women um, and people of color and a lot of marginalized communities. Um, what I am very much focused on is increasing the representation of women in public office um, and political participation in general, right? Women can be politically active without necessarily being um, in elected office. Um, but, you know, recruiting and training women to run for office is, is, is a passion of mine, something I'm very much dedicated to. Um, so, again, I, I'm very much committed to making sure that we are building out a democracy that is representative of who we are as a country and a key step to that is making sure that those who represent us in government uh look like the people that they were elected to govern at every level of government. well how do women in elected office impact policies why is this so important to have women represented more fervently I love that question. Um, so I'm going to answer that through two different lenses, right? So let's talk about this concept of political representation. Right now, um, too few women, quite frankly, hold political office. Um, and this essentially results in political decisions that do not necessarily reflect the needs of women or the preferences of women and the impact that, that has. Um, and so I've come from the school of thought, um, which drives the work that I do, that you know the full and equitable participation of women in elected office is absolutely essential to making sure that we are building and sustaining a strong and vibrant democracy, right? Um, and because of that, because we all have different identities and our identities impact our lived experiences, that has a direct impact on our politics. Um, so I think it's important to frame this conversation with a few data points. So women are just above over 50% of, um, of the population in America. Um, it's essentially 51% of the population. However, at the congressional level, um, we are 26, we make up 26% um, of Congress, 24% uh, of the US Senate, 0% um, of presidencies, um, and 30% of statewide um, uh, of state legislators, right? And for American cities that have representation, that have um, over 100,000 people, 29%. However, I think it's really important when we're talking about identities that that's just the general number for women, which also equates to white women, because I think it's important to acknowledge like the racial nuances um, of representation politically. So when we're talking about the numbers of women of color in elected office, those numbers shrink considerably to only representation of 9% in Congress, 8% of state legislators, um, and only 14% of mayors in um, leading nation leading America's um, 100 largest cities, right? So to your question, um, you know, how does that impact policies? It impacts policies in a lot of different ways, right? So let's begin with gov governance. The difference between how men um, and women elected officials govern um, 
can be, you know, discussed and has been discussed and researched a lot of different ways in terms of, you know, how we are raised or whether it's innate, what have you. But two things are for sure. The way that women govern when they are in elected office that impacts policies is one, women tend to build by consensus. Women tend to engage um, in a lot of a lot more collaborative processes when it comes to legislative discussions, when it comes to negotiations, um, much more so than men. Um, and women elected officials also research has found bring back more money into their districts, right? At the end of the day, you know, who was bringing home the bacon, right? Because that's a big part of, um, of, of, of being elected official is not just passing policies, but also securing funding. And at the congressional level, uh, research again has found that um, women Congress, um, or Congress members deliver roughly 11% more every year in federal uh, funding to their home districts um, than their male colleagues. And women Congress members on average pass twice as many laws, right? Mm -hmm. um, so why does that matter? Right. Well, again, to dig a little bit deeper, women's participation in politics um, affects not just the funding and not just um, the collaborative process of negotiating um, the budget and, and, and policies, but it also impacts the range of policy issues that are being discussed, as well as the types of solutions that are being proposed um, to address the issues. Right. So when we're talking about, you know, how to do more women in elected office impact policies, um, it's not just a, like a, a one-two punch answer. It's, it's this really complicated, beautiful, nuanced com you know, a conversation in addressing the comprehensive impact that more women in elected office have. Um, because again, identities um, create lived experiences which impact um, politics, which have a direct, um, again, correlation in terms of an increase in policy making that emphasizes a quality of life issues. Um, and oftentimes policies that are more focused on families, um, uh, women and other marginalized communities, which has been proven that the more women there are in office, that those are the issues that tend to be focused on more. I understand that. I understand that because we are a society made of families. So it yes. will be great to take that into consideration when making policies. I do have another question for you. I have a friend who I think would be a great politician, but she shies away from the endeavor because she says that it's all corrupt and it's crazy. What I want to ask you is for women who are watching, how can we identify or how do you identify possible candidates who would be great political figures? How do you identify them and how do you convince them to give it a shot? I love this question. <laughs> so I think oftentimes for women and particularly women of color, right? We fall into um, the, I'm not qualified, I'm not ready. And so we spend a lot of time trying to build our resume, um, trying to convince ourselves, i.e. really trying to convince society um, that we have the right to be at the table, right? Um, and I rebuke that. I rebuke Amen. that. <laughs> I rebuke that because, again, because government represents us. You are us, right? Your story and your lived experiences absolutely qualify you for you to throw your hat into the political ring, right? And I think it's really important, particularly for, for, for women of color in, 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 in America, that we have been politically active without necessarily being in elected office, right? And I, and, and I challenge the woman out there who is already leading in her community, right? Already engaging in um, leadership roles and already has a sphere of influence um, at the community or, or neighborhood level um, to begin to think about politics, not as corrupt, um, although that's definitely a separate argument that I would not necessarily argue against, but I fundamentally believe that the more good people that we have in office, that we can really change the system and build a government together that represents the interests of the people who are not currently being fought for um, at every level of government, right? And that begins with us challenging ourselves as women, especially as women of color, to redefine our own understanding of leadership and that we are the solution to the problems yes. that we are facing and that you have the power. And as long as you have the character and the passion to serve your community, 
you are absolutely qualified to run for public office in this country. Um, and again, I fundamentally believe, again, through a lot of messages that society tells us that we're too much of this or we're not enough of that, um, to understand that, that to acknowledge that is a reality that society does make those judgments about us, particularly because society hates ambitious black and brown women, but to also understand and recognize that until we until we find and build the courage individually and collectively as a community to understand and to recognize that collectively we have the power to redefine what ambition is and that it looks like us and to redefine the face of political leadership and that it looks like us, then we can begin to build a movement that we can completely change the way that US government is structured because we are changing the people that make up government and that the people that make up government um, at best should be the people who are listening to your podcast, to the people who are watching on, on, on Facebook Live, right? Like government is not this opaque, abstract, faraway thing that happens to us, but that we are foundational to the power that government has and that power belongs to you. And I invite the women who are listening and watching to step into that power. Oh my God, I just feel so inspired. I have goosebumps and I'm I'm feeling like maybe I should go ahead and sign some paperwork or at least try yeah. to identify other women. No, I identify other women to help you in this cause because this is amazing. You are absolutely right. We are the government. That's not some far removed ideal and, and position that we have to just watch what they do. We make up that and we should make it up if we know we have the character, the desire to lead, the yeah. desire to change, the desire to inspire people and the desire to see our communities grow. I love the work that you're doing. I am so excited to meet you today. Um, everyone out there, how can we find you to, to follow your work? Um, could you introduce your social media to us? Absolutely. Um, so I'm I'm around, as they say. <laughs> I can be I can be followed on Twitter. Uh, my handle is first name last name Ed A I L A H. Last name is A M A R U. Um, you know, feel free to you know reach out again if there are women out there who are interested in running for office. Um, I wear a, a lot of different hats, and I would absolutely love um, to connect them to resources um, and programs and and, and training opportunities um, where they can begin to take that first step again, because women, um, we are over 50% of the population and we hold half the sky. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, uh, we absolutely deserve every seat in every single legislative chamber in all 50 states and beyond. Um, and building, building a society begins with, um, again, building the confidence and redefining our own understanding of power. Um, and how we can build it um, within ourselves, how we can use it ourselves, and how we can build it collectively um, through public policy as the tool um, to create a more equitable and just society. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. I am loving your advocacy. Oh, I appreciate meeting you so much, so much. Thank you so much for joining me today. The pleasure was absolutely mine. Thank you so much. And to everyone else out there, make sure you find Nayella like Umbrella on social media and start thinking about who do you know or even yourself that should take up and replace all of the leaders that you don't think are capable. If you think that there's an issue, it might be that it's your turn to take the lead. I am T. Erica with the fight for women's rights battle against patriarchy. I do hope you'll all join me on January 22nd. I'm going to be fighting. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys soon. We're gonna fight, 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 fight for a